of design of bodywork. The designer's main object, of course, is efficiency. The structure must be weatherproof. It should be streamlined for low air resistance and allow for ease of access to passenger compartment, etc. Finally, it is his endeavor to make it pleasing to the eye. The material from which the body is made is chiefly sheet steel, bent, molded, stretched, and generally forced into the required shapes. The main body, lamps, wheels, and other fittings. Take the case of the front bumper. It has been designed to carry out its job of protecting the bodywork and also to be neat to look at, to be not unworthy of the car of which it is a part. The making of such a bumper may appear to the uninitiated to be a pretty tough job to take on. But thanks to the toolmaker and the modern great press tool, it can be turned out accurately and in quantities with a minimum of skilled labor. The first stage is the conversion of the flat piece of steel into the shape of the bumper in one press, which brings a pressure of 475 tons behind a huge punch sliding down inside a die and forcing the steel into the space between punch and die. These components have been very accurately machined and hand wrought to such a degree of precision that the thickness of the sheet exactly fits the clearances between them. However, before the punch comes into action, another part of the press tool comes down onto the outer edges of the steel sheet, gripping it firmly. When the sheet is thus held between the upper and lower parts, the punch comes down inside. It has to overcome the resistance of that grip, and so a tension is set up in the sheet. The tightness of the grip is predetermined to prevent wrinkles forming in the steel as it is forced down into the narrow space between punch and die where it assumes the required shape. The action is automatic. First, the grip then the punch. A pause to allow the metal to settle into its new shape, and out comes the bumper. At this stage, although the shape is there, the edges are rough and untrimmed. In operations that follow, these rough edges are clipped off, and various holes for brackets, etc., are punched out. This completes the press part of the job. Here are the stages, the steel blank, after the first press, press work completed. Don't think, however, that when we have shaped our blank sheet of steel into bumper form, that we have arrived at the finished article. Granted, it is the fundamental operation and the most important. But a lot has yet to be done, and we shall pay a brief visit to some of the other departments through which the bumper passes before it can be called car-worthy. First of all, surface imperfections in the metal must be removed. A lot of this work can be done by automatic machinery, but in the final stages, the human touch is necessary. This operation is called skirting. The butting wheels or mops used in this process are made of laminated fabric impregnated with an abrasive compound. On leaving that room, the bumpers will be all ready to pass into the nickel plating department. Here they are fixed, three or four together, on frames and carried by overhead gantry crane. First, to tanks containing cleansing fluids to remove all traces of dirt and grease that might prevent the even formation of the layer of nickel. One frame is dropped into a bath and left for a certain length of time, while another, now ready for a move, is picked up and brought along to its next treatment. There is an art in dipping to ensure that the liquid washes over the surfaces of the bumpers and gets at every corner, however awkward. When the washing process has been completed, the racks of bumpers are lowered into the plating baths in which nickel will be deposited on the spotless steel surfaces electrically to a controlled thickness. On leaving the plating bath, the bumper will be coated with nickel with a dull or matte surface. 
The next process is to bring this to a high polish. The polishing process, like the skirting process, is started with the aid of an automatic machine. Indeed, it is the same machine as we saw before. Skirting is going on on the right-hand side and polishing on the left. A different grade of mop is used for polishing. Again, as in skirting, the final stages of polishing call for the personal finishing touch. In this condition, the bumpers can go straight into the chromium bath, in which, again, the metal is deposited on their surfaces by electrolysis. When they have received the requisite thickness of chromium, they are removed for washing, after which they are ready for fixing to the car with the appropriate brackets. Now for the moral of the story. You will have realized that the fundamental action in the whole process was the conversion of a flat piece of steel into the shape of a bumper, and that in that fundamental action, the focal point is where dies and punch make contact with the sheet steel. The dies and punch determine the shape of the bumper. In the beginning, the shape of the bumper to be emanated from the brain of the designer. This design is passed on to the tool maker. It is his job to create the press tools, the dies, the punch, and any other accessory details such as the tool for clipping the rough edges of the bumper after it leaves the first press. These take shape on paper, first of all, and many decisions have to be made, such as, say, the materials to be used. Perhaps the heavier components may have to be produced by the foundry in the form of castings, roughly, to shape. In spite of the apparent clumsiness of these large masses of metal, they will be finished off to very accurate dimensions to within a thousandth of an inch. And as work proceeds, it is constantly checked by templates and other gauges. This machine is doing the first rough shaping of a casting that will form part of the die. The cutter on the left is being controlled by the plunger on the right, which itself is being guided by the shape of a pattern made of plaster of Paris. But when it comes to the final fine fitting, the skill of the craftsman is needed to ensure that clearances and dimensions are accurate and as laid down on the initial drawing. These are checked by template, micrometer, shadow graph and other precision methods until eventually the tool can be pronounced ready for fitting in the press. So you see that even in these modern days, the individual craftsman more than holds his own. For he it is who creates the tools, without which the machines would be useless. It is the tool maker whose responsibility it is to keep up the standard of accuracy of present-day factory products of all kinds, including the car bumper, which has been the...